Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? All right, fine. And you? I will not complain. Will not okay. complain. Hello. Right. I'm hard time owner. This is hard time grandmother Helen. I gotta ask, what's what's with the? I mean, he's got like the Rick Clifford over here. He's got a blue dog, a red dog. He's got a pitcher. Yes, this is his little favorite animal. He's been having Clifford since day one. And I had just brought along his little picture when he was about four years old. He had a birthday party at the dog park. He had like 61 people and 10 dogs. Wait, 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 wait. Say again. I spent like $1,200 on this party. I planned that party for a whole year. He had a DJ and everything. That's extravagant. Yes. She had so much stuff, I had to take a U-Haul to take it out. I had a doggy cake that I had baked out here in Cyprus for the dog. It was cinnamon with French vanilla cream, but we also had cakes for the guests. We just had a nice little setup. The Hard Time is nine years old. Yes. That's a funny kind of name. Why is he named Hard Time Anthony? Well, I named him Hard Time because he had a hard time finding a place to stay. I'm pretty much his third owner. The people didn't want to pay, so Hard Time got repoed. Okay. And I wind up with Hard Time. I took him from them, and I've been having him ever since, and he's a joy in my life. Okay. He's been previously diagnosed with congestive heart failure, but right. tell me, what's going on with him? Well, you know, he's bloated, he's extended, and he's been having a hard time breathing, as we can see now. Yeah. He's breathing at a heavy and a hard pace. Distending that neck out and right. everything. And a lot of times when they have those distended abdomens, you'll see that type of breathing. When the heart can't pump blood properly, that causes the excessive fluid to back up into the abdomen. Let's see if Hard Time will be real cool about it and allow me to listen to him. He will. Got a very significant murmur. I would call it about a five out of six. Mm -hmm. It's very audible. It's really, really loud. Mm -hmm. But there's also what we call a palpable thrill. So the heart gives off some vibrations, mm -hmm. but when it has a really large and hard murmur, it's giving off so much vibration, you can feel it bouncing through the chest cavity, and it gives off that <laughs> like a bass. When we feel that, that automatically puts us at a level five. There is significant heart disease going on here. We have to figure out the best way to control all of this. Right. Because at the end of the day, one of the things we need to understand is there's no cure for heart disease. Yes. Okay, and I'm sure, you know, you've been made aware of that. Yes. But I like this is something that we maintain and manage. Mm -hmm. I don't like the way he's breathing here. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. You see his gums? Yes. You see how pale they are? Mm-hmm. They should not be that pale. Okay. Okay. So. When the gums are that pale, mm -hmm. that leads me to think that he's not being oxygenated well, which yes. is obvious. Right. But he also could be anemic. Oh. I need to help him immediately. This is a dog that is in severe distress. I want to do an abdominal synthesis. Okay. And what the abdominal synthesis is is for us to go in with an ultrasound. Okay. We're going to put a needle into the abdomen and okay. pull as much fluid off as we can. Okay. The reason we're doing that is to give hard time, some de-stressing, if you will. Okay. Give him a little bit of release, because that fluid builds up. It, it puts a lot of pressure on the organs, mm -hmm. the diaphragm, and things, and it just makes him really uncomfortable. I want to be very cautious here, and we're going to have our oxygen uh, machine in there with us, really allowing for the oxygen saturation to be a little bit higher than it normally would be. I do want to stay here. I don't want to leave my baby. That's perfect. And we have to do CPR, intubate him, or whatever. We got to do that. Yes, ma'am. To try to save a life. Absolutely. Absolutely. We wouldn't have it any other way. I'm going to go in the back for your procedure so you can feel better and breathe better. Bye, poo poo. Okay. Take care of him, OK, Mom? Thank you, thank you. All right, no problem. Give your call soon, OK? OK. Thank you, Sister Martha. Hard time. Yeah. OK. So we're going to have him right side up first before we want to put him on his back. Because sometimes they do better when they're on their side versus their back and all that weight on them. The goal of what we're going to do is just try to pull as much fluid off as we can. We're going to have to just keep a good look on his face. Okay. Let's just kind of, yeah, easily put that on. We got him kind of sedate. It's probably going to be quite a bit of fluid because you can see how large his abdomen is really distended. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pull 60 cc's off at a time. I need somebody to keep count. I got it. 
So they got a pretty big pocket here. Let's kind of just rotate them gently. I'm going to use the ultrasound to locate pockets of fluid in the abdomen. This will allow me to insert a needle and to remove that fluid. We call that aspiration. And you can just see all of this black area is all fluid. So it stopped. We may have to roll on one of back. The fluid is building up because of the congestive heart failure. One of the main reasons is because of the amount of pressure that's being developed in the venous system. It can't overcome the blood's return to the heart. So it's starting to bag up onto the abdomen. So he'll feel better right after you pull the fluid? Yeah, he should be feeling better instantly. You know, he probably feels better already with the amount of fluid we've taken off. We'll definitely do everything we can to keep him comfortable, keep him happy, and for sure. We'll follow up with them if we need to continue to pull fluid off for the next year. We'll do that. Okay. All right. So we've pulled 10 of these off already, and we probably got another 10 to 20 to go. It's going to be quite a bit of fluid. Oh, wow. You can actually see the abdomen get smaller. Look at his gums. Do they look better? Yeah, they do. <laughs> They're more pink. Get some blood pumping around there. You feel better? Say so thank you, Dr. Blue. You got it, buddy. <laughs> Hard time got immediate relief after we removed an insane amount of fluids from his abdomen. He's a little wound up from the procedure, but once he's calm again, we'll really see a difference. Oh, hey, my puppy! Oh, hardy time, hardy time. You miss your mama? Got him? Your mama miss you? All right. Oh, poo poo, you look better and feel better. So, the blue took care of you. He's definitely a lot more pink than okay. he was. Okay. This is all the fluid that I removed from his abdomen. It's about 720 ml. That is a lot of excessive fluid okay. to have on one's body, especially okay. being such a small dog. Yes. So that's something that we just really need to be concerned with. He was doing really well as he was resting in the kennel. Like yeah. right now, he seems just to be kind of worked up. OK. So we need to get him back very calm mm -hmm. so he can start to just calm, calm down and start getting his color back. I want to see you back for a recheck next week. OK. In the meantime, make sure that we're eating, drinking, and remaining calm. OK. It's important to understand that, you know, hard time ain't doing hard time. You need to be doing hard time on the sofa. No extraneous activity, because that could literally lead to issues with the heart trying to work more than it should be. OK. And that could lead to collapse, which could lead to death. From here on out, resting on the sofa, watching Animal Planet. That's it. Oh, hearty time. My baby feeling better.